got one talk coming up next from Yuri Goldstein. You might know Yuri as the maintainer of many open source projects in the GraphQL ecosystem and beyond. He is the founder and CEO of the Guild. He's a member of the GraphQL Technical Steering Committee and is working on a whole host of very interesting new projects, one of which he's excited to tell you about today. Please welcome to the stage, Yuri. Hi, everyone. I'm really, really excited to be here. Um, I think, you know, we heard a lot about uh, everything that's happened in GraphQL till now and all kinds of really good opinions. And I think I'm really excited to be here because I think in this conference, which is like the first really open conference for GraphQL, uh, we can hear things that uh, from all broad sections of opinions and from vendors and things like that. And for us at the Guild, like this is the core of what we care about. Like all the tools that we build that a lot of you already know and use on a daily basis, uh, we're built with the idea of they're separated, they're open, uh, they're maintained in a way that you can count on, on the future. Uh, and also you can replace them whenever you want. It's the quite opposite of vendor lock. And this is why we also became the largest sponsor of that conference, because it was really important for us to have a conference where you can look at all uh, solutions, even our, the solutions are theoretically competing with our solutions and easily replace and find you know, what's best for you and talk to everyone, all the different vendors in one, one single place. So I'm really, really happy that this has happened. And first of all, I want to thank all of you here that came. Like it's such a, look at all of you, like this is a, a dream come true for me personally and I think for the GraphQL community. So thank you for being here. Um, so from our position here in the, in the first open conference, I want to basically give an important message. Uh, I think that uh, we're now at an inflection point for the GraphQL community. Like, first of all, like we, see, we saw the history of GraphQL, and we saw how many companies are adopting GraphQL and they're not going back. Um, so we, we established like great best practices. Uh, it's now safe to use in every place. And, we know we know how to do it. Like it's uh, we, we have like the the safe base to bring it onto our projects and into our uh, companies uh, and build on the known patterns that you heard before. But also uh, when we open source things and we give people the, uh, the opportunities to play with everything and to exchange ideas, then innovation happens. And what my main message today is that like as we now plateau, as we now like came into the a place where we're very safe and it's. Uh, and GraphQL is basically almost everywhere. Now we're also in this, this conference is an is a inflection point and we're going to grow into new areas thanks to a lot of open things that are happening. So my talk today is about basically just highlighting things from you. You can also look at this talk as kind of like a guide of which talks to go around, uh, like, a, like a schedule guide because um, all the open uh, stuff that are exciting and are coming uh, are being announced today in the conference. So first, first thing, like subscriptions, different stream, like we hear about it a lot. And it, for, I think many years, it was like this, um, uh, it was like uh, this cool stuff that is hard to get and maybe in the future, you know, we can play around with this. Um, and we need to remember that one of the strengths of GraphQL is that it's not only a request res response, pro response protocol. Like this is, those are extremely powerful uh, abilities for us to use, but, um, what happened in the last year or so is that there was a lot of work on creating, on making uh, open standards around, first of all, transports, uh, and also uh, that you will hear about uh, in Dennis's talk. So if you, uh, this is a talk that I really highly, highly uh, recommend for you to, to go to, like GraphQL over internet. Uh, Dennis specifically is maintaining the GraphQL over HTTP, uh, GraphQL WS over WebSocket, and the GraphQL SSC protocols. Uh, so that means that today uh, you can build on like really solid foundations when you use those, all those new tools. Uh, same thing goes for like the spec itself. Like you can hear from Yakov's talk about how, uh, like how he introduced, he and a full team of people like introduced new, uh, new abilities to the spec itself to make things possible like defer, uh, like defer and stream for example. So today this is, if you're using open, tools, uh, you will hear from uh, both Apollo and Stellate about 
how easy it is right now to use Defer, uh, which is a very, very powerful tool. Uh, so I really highly recommend for you to, 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 to go to those talks as well. Then the other, uh, I think, area that uh, kind of like we know already like what we can rely on are GraphQL clients. You know, we have the known clients that we use uh, and they're good. But also, uh, you know, we heard a bunch of talks before about how, you know, if you have like just, you know, uh, I don't know, a full stack app or a monolith or like a, a monolith or a monorepo, maybe a GraphQL sometimes is not the easiest to use. So I would argue that this is, has a lot to do with toolings and that we have not yet reached the peak of GraphQL developer uh, experience. And luckily, uh, in this talk, in this uh, conference, you will hear about a couple of new things that are happening. Like, first of all, the first client that we all use is GraphQL. And ever since we all used GraphQL and was this magical experience that we get out of complete, uh, out of the, our APIs, and uh, things, for a while, like, things haven't moved, but then, a group of a lot of people from many different companies just joined together uh, and picked up graphical development again. So I really highly recommend for you to uh, go to this talk from uh, both Dima from the Guild and Thomas from Stellate. And it just shows like how collaborations between a lot of different uh, open collaboration on an open source project between many different uh, companies from the ecosystem bring back like a lot of cool stuff that uh, will be announced there, so I don't want to ruin their talks. Um, but then, you know, like we heard right now, in the same context of clients, you know, we have a lot of questions around there's uh, uh, React server components, there's like many new things that are happening. Um, and also I would say that we introduced a lot of like uh, new specifications for the, for the GraphQL specification to make the client experience much, much better and much easier. So um, the question comes, well, if we look at the whole history of GraphQL uh, and GraphQL clients and usage uh, and all the new stuff that are happening in the React ecosystem, in the Svelte ecosystem, and in general on the client space, what if we would create a new client from scratch with all those ideas in mind? Could we make a much better job? Could we create something that is like, uh, much better for, and that could uh, basically eliminate a lot of the pain that we have today with GraphQL clients. And there's not one, but two new clients that are being announced today at the conference. Uh, one is Isograph uh, from Robert, which is really, really exciting. Uh, and the other one is Zudini from Alec. Uh, I've seen demos of both of those, and this is a really, really exciting future for GraphQL and the clients. So I highly recommend for you to try them out, and I think you know, this will show you that, you know, we're in a very good place with GraphQL, but the future is even brighter. And there's also the existing clients that could now, you know, benefit from all those new innovations. So I highly recommend, so I'm sure that like, the existing clients will also take uh, a lot of advantage of the things that are coming. Like, so there's the talks from uh, Marion from Hazura about Relay, uh, and the talks from Elisa about the Apollo client. So those are clients. Um, and now, um, Lee mentioned a bit, but like, so I'm not gonna repeat too much, but we also done a lot of work to open the community. And uh, first of all, there's the local meetup program that uh, we've done for the last couple of months. Like it's been a great success um, all over the world. So like Lee said, you should join that. Another thing is like the new Discord official channel. So by the way, there's a, there's a GraphQL Conf uh, channel there. There's a lot of you already talking there, so I highly recommend you to go on discord.graphql.org uh, and like talk to each other there. Uh, GraphQL.org itself uh, is the main source of like, you know, if you really want to learn GraphQL and you want to learn from best practices and things like that, GraphQL.org uh, is the source, and it's going to. We're now in the process of rebuilding it. So also, if you have like notes or questions about it, let us know. And the most important thing about the open community is this conference. Like this, is, this has been a greater success than like I think any one of us expected and we know it's gonna to continue to the future. So thank you all for you know, making that happen uh, because that means that we can bring ideas and we can talk about things like I said that we can't talk in other places. And that's the last thing I want to talk about in the open uh, like uh, how spaces that we are opening. So GraphQL gateways, a lot of us are in the process of like choosing the right GraphQL gateway. 
Um, and, you know, let's look about like where we were, you know, we started from like in the, in the, in our community, we started from basically like regular GraphQL servers that are like, you know, uh, serving a couple of clients. Uh, and th in, in that pattern, we felt like, you know, that's it. Like, you know, we have a certain way of executing uh, and everything is fine. But I'll just mention briefly that even in that space of the regular GraphQL execution, there's innovation happening. So I had, these are three talks of like just three different uh, people that are talking about how they took the regular GraphQL execution and improved it a lot. Uh, you know, we have Benji uh, that talks about GraphFast, which is an exciting new technology. Um, we have uh, Jens that talks about like Data Loader 3.0, which a lot of us are using Data Loader, but it just shows you that even on things that all of us are using, there's still innovation happening. Um, and even into it, build their own GraphQL orchestrator, and we're going to talk about it in this conference. Uh, I also mentioned that Yoga Server, the server that we are building, also diverted from GraphQL GS execution, and we have our own execution that is way more efficient. So it just shows you that, like, even on the core parts, if you open and talk with everyone else, there's so much innovation happening. So those are the regular, you know, GraphQL servers, and like, you know, people said before me, you should use that and only later on maybe grow to like, you know, a federated architecture. But when you do, it's also important that like those things will be open. And what happened in the last year or so, even even before, is that we have so many options when we choose our GraphQL gateways. You know, we have Apollo Router and Apollo Gateway. We have GraphQL Mesh, Conductor, Hot Chocolate, Hazura, GraphFast, WonderGraph, Solo.io, Tyke, GraphBase, and so many more. So, now you have so many options when you choose your GraphQL gateway. And you know, one important point that I want to make is that when this architecture becomes complex, so you have your GraphQL gateway, you have your subgraphs, and you have your schema registry, it's important to note that like, you don't need to choose one and tie them together with another. Those are all separate, uh, separate, tools, in the, uh, separate, um, uh, separate tools in your architecture and you can mix and match everything and you have choices on all. You can choose one gateway and choose many different subgraphs. You can choose one gateway and many different schema registries. You have options for, you know, Apollo Studio, GraphQL Hive, Banana Cake Pop, the Cosmos Studio. Like on each part of the stack, you can choose the best tool. And if anyone says otherwise, talk to me. <laughs> now, the question comes, well, how do we choose? How do we choose the best tool? Like there's so many options. Well, uh, I really highly recommend for you to go to this talk, how to choose a GraphQL gateway by Dotan, the CTO of the Guild. What we've done is we worked with many, many companies in the ecosystem, the largest companies in the ecosystem to go through that choice uh, because we mostly care about you choosing the best and not necessarily like choosing our tool or combining it with, with our tool. So we uh, collaborated with many different companies, including our competitors, uh, to build an open source benchmark that everyone can contribute to and everyone can see exactly like who, what, what, what uh, gateway performs how uh, in what scenario. There's many different scenarios from the simplest to the most complex to crazy scale to smaller scale. Uh, and there's also going to be some interesting announcement in this talk. So I highly recommend you to try that out. Um, and the last thing I want to leave you with is like when we have all those three, uh, all those different types of uh, components in our architecture, we have the spec of how those are talking to each other. And that's one of the most crucial areas. If you have, you know, think about all the innovation that I just mentioned that's happening because we have an open spec for GraphQL and how so many vendors here are like innovating and pushing GraphQL forward. So it's also very important that we have an and spec for uh, this federated architecture. And that's why I want to talk today about Fusion. So I'm not going to talk too much, but I'm just going to say that like, uh, you should really, if there's one talk in this conference that I personally am going to attend, is GraphQL Fusion, Rethinking Distributed GraphQL. Like, I tr personally believe that this is the future of distributed GraphQL. Uh, we, are high, we are very strongly uh, investing in it and co co collaborating with Chili Cream. Uh, but it's not only us. Like the companies that are working on this open federated spec are Hazura, IBM, Solo.io, AWS AppSync, 
and Wundergraf. Um, this is like a, you know, really, really a very strong group of companies. And it's not, they're not just putting their names there. Like we as, uh, as the guild, we're bringing in all the stuff that we, we learned from GraphQL Mesh, where you can take open API, gRPC, um, and any other source and, and basically federate that in your, in your uh, distributed gateway. It's not only GraphQL. Um, and then AWS AppSync, the team, brings all their knowledge from subscription support, throttling and authentication. Uh, Wondergraph are, bringing, are building their uh, adapter spec for gRPC and Kafka, and Kafka, basically async API also into your gateway. Uh, and Azura is bringing their data, co data compliant API, which they'll talk in their, um, in their keynote. So my main point for today is, um, you know, like everyone said, there's a lot of best practices and you can rely on and, and you can go with the safe things. But if you look at all the open innovation that is happening out there, we are just getting started. And I think you should go and really examine all the talks that I just mentioned and much more and many other talks in that conference, uh, because you also want to bet on, it, on, on the future, on the, on the things that will stay here for longer. And in my personal opinion, the things that stay longer are actually the things that are open uh, and that are collaborated with uh, many different companies together. So thank you, enjoy, and see us also on our booth in, uh, of the Guild. Thank you.